So today I'm going to be mixing it up a little bit and doing a comparison of a great medium format film camera and a great medium format digital camera or well considering how expensive medium format digital cameras are a medium format digital camera. So those two cameras will be the inimitable Mamiya 7, a heavyweight champion of the 6x7 medium format film world and my favorite film camera. And secondly, this absolute behemoth uh, the GFX 100. I have my scanning lens mounted right now, but uh, trust me, I did not shoot the comparisons with this lens. So on the Mamiya 7, I'm going to be using the 80 f4, which in full frame terms is roughly a 40 f2. And on the, the GFX, I'm going to be using the 45 2.8, which is equivalent to about a 35 f2.2, so slightly wider field of view. Couple of caveats if you're the kind of person who cares about that sort of detail. If you don't, timestamps below. First caveat, the field of view is slightly different, it's like a 35mm versus a 40. Second, the scans are on the GFX. In terms of films, I used Portra 160 for color and T-Max 100 for black and white, and that's because those are some of the sharpest films available in their respective negative formats. Of course, for the Mamiya 7, I tripod mounted all the shots. The GFX has a really good IS built in, so I just used that. So starting at the top, I'm going to show you some images of the CNH factory up in Richmond, and I'll also show you some images over in Emeryville. Unintentionally, these are both going to be urban landscape industrial shots, which, you know, doesn't have any people and uh, is one particular type of subject. On the left, we have Mamiya 7 80mm Portra 160, and on the right, we have the GFX 100 with the 45. Overall, I've matched the white balance approximately. You can see that the colors are a little bit different. There's a bit of an overall orangey, yellowy cast on the film version, partially because I balanced the white balance warm. And so that means that the trees have a bit of a warm cast to them, which I actually like. The digital version, despite being balanced pretty warm, the trees are a bit greener. If we look at detail, it's not an entirely fair fight because this is a single image and I would have preferred to stitch. I don't think we would have gotten too much more detail stitching, to be honest. Clearly there's a little more detail in the digital version, but you could print either of these as large as you wanted. Also notice the sky hue is a little bit different, so I've adjusted the blues on the digital version a bit, but if we go by default, it's a little more purple. And if we pull it a little more cyan, we can roughly match the hue of the skies. I've also pulled down the luminance of the skies to reduce the contrast there, but if we undo that, the skies look pretty similar. So here's an alternate version using the classic neg profile, which is more of a meant to look like a classic negative. They look pretty similar. I think in this case, the colors on the digital are probably a little bit closer with the classic negative profile. The trees are a little bit warmer also. Overall, I think the digital is closer to the film in this case. I've also applied an upright correction here. So here's a quick second view of the same building again, starting off with the standard Provia profile over here and the Portra 160, of course, over here. Same thing with the trees. They're a bit greener on the digital and warmer on film. The contrast is relatively similar with my edits. The cones here are a bit more of a sort of reddish orange on digital. And on the film, this probably feels truer to life to me. Of course, we can edit the hue of things, so if we wanted to make these more of a true orange, we probably can. Second version with the classic negative profile, obviously the contrast just jumped up a bit. 
I think maybe a little too much. And honestly, maybe the Fuji version now looks a little bit like an Instagram filter. And if we just go with the plain old Provia profile, it looks a little more like a digital image, but more honest. Okay, you're probably bored of this building, so this is the third and final shot. I think we can see some extra differences this time. I adjusted this quite warm. The film version shows some of this warm yellow, orange, ambery cast on the blue and on the green, and the digital version has more varied colors. Overall, the tonality is pretty similar because I've done a little bit of work in the develop panel to get it similar. And if we go to the classic Neg version, I think the colors on these signs become a little bit closer. The contrast also jumps up a fair bit. So final color scene, again industrial, but now we're in Emeryville instead of Richmond-ish. And on the left, you can see difference in the skies. Digital skies are going to be a little more blue to purple, and the film skies tend to be a little more cyan. We could potentially shift the color over a little to get it closer, but now it's more saturated, and now they look pretty matched to me. Again, we see a lot of what we saw before, where there's an overall warm look to the film, and the digital is a little more varied. And here's a classic NAG version. I think the color shifts that have been applied to it are maybe a bit much. Let's move over to black and white. And here I can do something a little more objective. I can set the black and white points so that we're just starting to clip in the image area. And it's immediately obvious, on TMAX 100 anyway, that the film image is way less contrasty. And the digital image has a ton of contrast. Of course, we can change that. So here I've done some edits to both, and I haven't attempted to match my edits, I edited them separately. On the digital version, I adjusted the colors so that the sky is a bit darker, so more of a red filter look. And on the film version, of course, that's not possible because the negative is black and white. If we zoom in, we can see that although it is just a single frame, they're both really sharp, but the digital is definitely a little bit sharper, and I'd be happy with either of these. So final comparison, again, this is the flat version, linear curves with just clipping. And on the left, we can see softer look. Maybe I'm doing some wishful thinking, but I do think the highlights on the film version show a little bit of glow compared to the digital version. If we go to the edited versions, I've brought out some detail in the shadows on the digital version and also pulled down the highlights a bit to get more detail. And they look a little more similar now, but overall less contrast on the film version. And I think the film version looks a little more classic, maybe a little more like a Robert Adams image. And the digital version looks a little more modern. So now that you've had a chance to see the images, I hope that you have found this useful. I will say, in terms of my opinions, really like the tonality that I got out of Portra 160. Actually, I uh, kind of wish I had shot 400H as well, because I probably prefer the tonality of that, but it's getting phased out. I didn't find that I was easily able to perfectly replicate that tonality with digital, but I came closer than maybe you might think. And in terms of preference, well, it's hard to say. They're both great. I'd be super happy to shoot either, and in fact, I do shoot both of them all the time. But I probably do prefer the tonality from Portra 160. On the other hand, with the GFX, I got some nice little bonus shots, and some of those I liked quite a lot. On the other hand, you might be less careful because there's not the cost involved. I know some people really need that added film cost to get them to be careful with their compositions. I come out with a mostly film-related photography video every month or so. If you want to see more, there's the subscribe button. Thanks for watching the whole video, and I will see you in a month or so.